um, internet meme puzzle thing that supposedly children can solve it in like five to 10 minutes. Um, programmers can solve it in like an hour and people with higher education, <laughs> it supposedly takes even longer. So if you know the answer, like just have a go at trying to figure this out. Oh my God, fucking out Travis. <laughs> I was about to say if you... <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard to get this, right? Some people already know, yeah. So I guess, you know, when you try to solve things like this, it's hard to, at first, um, think what the pattern is, right? Um, <laughs> especially when um, we're used to certain old ways of thinking. But yeah, the answer to this puzzle, little puzzle, was the number of circles in the, um, in the actual symbols, right? So the answer is two. You guys are all correct. <laughs> it's okay, Travis. I wasn't. You're too fast. Um, so another check-in question. What's in your mind is the most overused word in ISEC? Okay, fine. Besides ISEC. <laughs> leadership, strategic, leadership, leadership. PNF, is that a word? Mm -hmm. Is that an acronym? Amazing. Why? Impact. Essence. Yeah. It's really interesting because if, so, if this was asked to me many years ago, I would have probably said exchange. Yeah, but leadership is probably more, yeah. Nice. Okay. So um, following that, what about in like corporate settings? What do you think is the most like overly used word? Just take a guess. When? Meeting? <laughs> oh my God, I think you guys are right, actually. Meeting. <laughs> profit? No, people don't actually go around saying profit, profit. <laughs> Growth, money, do. <laughs> Trackers, join the meeting. Yeah, it's for a meeting. Oh, but. I, see, I have my own answer, what I think corporate says the most, but no one has said this word yet. It's really interesting. Hmm. So um, actually, my, my answer would be um, this one, innovation. I think innovation is said so much in corporate, like let's innovate, let's find an innovative solution. So um, today's question is this, what's really hindering innovation? And I want to talk a bit about innovation. Right, but uh, hang on. Let me look at your faces. When I say innovation, do I see what I expect? Is if I say innovation, I expect many of your faces to kind of go like, oh, like innovation. Like we talked about this already. Like this is such a boring, cliche topic, right? Um, and you're right. Like innovation is such like cliche. Like you just say it, talk about it all the time. Um, but you know, with cliches, cliches are cliches for a reason. Right, People, things when things get repeated over and over again, it's probably because there's a lot of value behind that. So, with innovation, right, there's a couple of um, you know ways to think about it. Um, in my mind, I just think of innovation. It's simply just two things. It's about listing what options you have available, and then you choose the best option, and then you execute. Right. Um, so part of innovation is like coming up with innovative ideas. And then the second part is, you know, being critical and trying to figure out which of these would work. And then you keep repeating. That's in a really simple sense. But in practice, innovation is much, much more difficult than this. Um, and maybe you guys uh, may have experienced this a lot. Um, Leo, I saw your brother or someone again, by the way. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe you would have experienced this a lot this year. So the pandemic's going on. Um, you know, there may be some conversations like, okay, should we like change the nature of like exchange programs? Um, should we, um, but then if we do that, like how do we make sure we're not changing too much, right? So there's always one side of innovation where it's like, okay, anything is possible. There's no stupid ideas. Everyone just contribute. Let's see what we can change. Let's like break down our assumptions. Um, but on the other hand, there's, uh, there's this kind of other valid point, like yes, um, it's important to innovate, but still, if we innovate too much, we might not be ISEC anymore, right? Um, like 
some innovations might just be too far. Imagine ISEC decides like, okay, what are we really good at? Where we've got like this skill set of matching people based on their demand or whatever. Hey, so why don't we may turn ISEC into like a dating service organization or, or something, right? Like that's an innovation, but maybe that's like too far away. And then you could argue, yeah, it's about peace and fulfillment, right? Like, you know, there's other ways, other aspects of peace and fulfillment, be it, you know, but then it's like, maybe that's too much of a, too far of a change, right? So there's always this complicated tension between how much innovation is appropriate versus how much is like um, too much. So I guess one, you know, a couple of comments I have on that. I don't really have answers to tell you how much is too much and how much is too little. Um, but, you know, because it always depends on the context, right? But um, I'll, again, I'll just reiterate some points you probably already know. It's like, whenever you have lots of crazy ideas, most of them will not work. But the ones that do are the ones that will really change ISEC a lot, right? Um, so all of you probably already intuitively know this, but in practice, like it's always important to just keep this in mind. It's always like playing around with this tension. Uh, okay, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is, um, I'll talk about this thing called the Cobra effect. Has anyone heard of this Cobra effect before? No? Yeah, so um, this is just a little bit of a random thing, right? So supposedly um, in you know, the British colonial India, um, there was a problem of just have, having so many cobras around, right? So what some people, what the government actually suggested was um, if you catch a cobra and bring me the head, I'll give you like a reward, right? So at first um, it was working quite well. The number of cobras on the street tended to be reduced. Um, but then over time, the number of cobras just kept increasing and increasing, despite more and more people bringing the cobra heads. And the reason for this is because at first people were genuinely trying to catch the cobras, but then over time they realized it's much easier to just breed the cobras at home um, and then bring it to the government and cash in their reward, right? So actually this solution, this supposedly innovative solution made the problem even worse than before. So I guess one kind of, um, you know, story or lesson to keep in mind is if you rush innovation too much, you can make things worse, right? So it's important to gather information, validate assumptions, like just think ahead um, of second order effects. So that's one aspect. Um, now, just now, you know, I'm trying to see as many of your faces now as possible. As I'm telling this story, I see most of faces just going like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I agree with you. You know, it's important not to rush, otherwise I can make it worse. But what if I tell you the complete opposite thing as well? What if I also tell you, if you decide things too slowly, if you don't make a decision, that itself is also a decision, right? So sometimes if you innovate too slow, you're gonna screw up as well, right? Like. Um, if you decide too late, that's effectively the same as not deciding at all. Inaction is itself an action. And there's this other quote that has a lot of truth um, behind it is that the biggest risk is not taking any risk. So you might be thinking like, damn, another kind of situation where on one hand you want to avoid um, the Cobra effect, um, which is what I talk about first. And on the other hand, you want to avoid analysis paralysis. Like if you um, overthink things, you'll decide too slow, and it can make things worse. So again, like, <laughs> it's like contradicting things about innovation, right? Um, so maybe, again, <laughs> I don't have answers or, you know, a detailed framework of what is the right amount or balance in between. Um, but one kind of rough rule of thumb that I found personally helpful um, is this quote, if um, a decision is reversible, usually the biggest risk is acting too slow. Um, if the decision is irreversible, then the biggest risk is usually acting too fast. Um, so again, you know, just uh, these are more like guides as opposed to clear black and white rules. So innovation is tricky, right? So, so far I talked about two tensions, um, you know, innovating too much versus preserving the core. I talked about an avoiding analysis paralysis, but also avoiding the Cobra effects. Um, and then there's more aspects too. It's the whole idea of like courage, like taking risk, um, because sometimes 
um, if you already have in your mind, like, okay, I want to innovate. Um, I know it's the right thing to do. I have an idea in mind, but so often what's stopping us is not really rational strategic things, but it's more irrational fear, right? So there's like lots of good quotes about the importance of courage. Like I think a really cliche one in ISEC is like step out of your comfort zone. Um, another one that I really like is like courage is not the absence of fear. It's being afraid but doing it anyway. Um, another one maybe you heard is the fool didn't know it was impossible. So he did it. So again, you look at this, you're like, yeah, okay, let's be courageous. Let's be brave. Let's do it, man. Um, but then there's a flip side to that as well, because the thing is, when courage goes well, people commend you like, wow, you are so brave. But if it doesn't work, people just say that was so stupid and reckless. Like, why did you do that? Right. So <laughs> that's that's the flip side of courage. Like, yes, sometimes some two people can do the exact same action. And depending on the outcome, retrospectively, it's categorized as either courageous or stupid or reckless. Right. So, again, there's another kind of um, tension to be resolved here. And when you when I think about risk, right, um, I kind of personally think of risk almost as like, there's two broad types of risks. There's like recoverable risks and unrecoverable risks. Um, so I'll tell you like a little bit, some more random personal stories, right? So in my spare time, um, I really like traveling to places that I call like underrated destinations. So places that people don't usually visit that often, right? Um, and there's like all these crazy, there's lots of moments where I almost died or like lots of dangerous situations I got into. So for example, like one situation was I was doing whitewater rafting in Eswatini um, in Africa. And when, um, with the white water rafting in the river, we asked the staff like, hey, so are there any crocodiles in the water? What do we do if there's crocodiles? Um, and they said, yeah, of course there's crocodiles. Don't worry about them. Um, and so we just all laughed like, okay, very funny. And the thing is, as we were white water rafting, we actually saw crocodiles in the water. And we were like, what the fuck? So after we finished the activity, we told the staff like, hey, dude, you know there's crocodiles in this water? Like it's so dangerous. And they're like, yeah, I know, we told you there's crocodiles in the water. Like they weren't even joking. <laughs> I'm just like, so when I look at experience like this, I'm like, okay, that was like in the, now that I look back, it's kind of funny, but if I died, it would just be so stupid, right? Like, why did I do that? So I guess that type of risk is like, yeah, that was really stupid. I wouldn't do it again. Um, another example is like, I was doing some, I was in like the mountains in Kyrgyzstan um, and, like, I remember there was this like guy and I was like, oh, hey, like, do you want to ride this horse? Do you want to have a go at horse riding? Um, I was like, yeah, sure. So he put me on top of the horse and then he just like, like slapped the horse and it just started running, right? And I've never ridden a horse before. It's going at full speed. I'm like, holy shit, As I'm just holding on to my life. And the really dangerous part about horse riding is there's like these parts where you put your feet um, so that you have like balance, um, but the proper stirrups are made such that if you fall off, they should detach. Otherwise you don't get, you could get dragged to death, right? Your feet could get stuck. So these stirrups were not the safety ones. They were like the like traditional ones. So if I fell off, I would have just gotten like dragged to death. So even that I was like, fuck, that was so stupid. So yeah, I think you get the point. There's some moments in my life where I was like, okay, that was just really dumb. I wouldn't do it again. Um, and yeah, but then there's some moments where it was like, okay, actually that was kind of like cool and fun. I'd probably do it again. Then another's like, okay, it's only fun the first time. I wouldn't do it again. And the third is like the ones I told you. Yeah, that was just stupid. So, you know, the point is you can think of risk as like some of them, you can recover from it if things go wrong, but the other is like non-recoverable. So again, when we think about the context of innovation is like, yes, you we want to have courage and take risk, but rather than um, thinking of, yeah, like just, but don't do something that's unrecoverably stupid or reckless, right? Things that such that if it goes wrong, it's hard to recover. Um, and in terms of like my little guide or comments in term about what's in the middle, <laughs> my, the only thing I have to say here is like, yeah, balancing this too is really hard. And I don't have like an answer. Like I don't have much wisdom to share with you guys, unfortunately on this point. Um, 
but at least I told you, yeah, this is hard. <laughs> um, however, although I don't have something for you, the answer for you on this, um, I do have something else that may help you um, think about resolving these kind of tricky tensions and paradoxes, right? So I've got a quick video to share. Oh, shit, actually, I just realized, hang on. I need to share my sound as well, I forgot. Okay, so I've got a quick uh, minute and a half video. Hey, I read somewhere that mathematicians can turn a sphere inside out. Yes, that's true. What's the big deal? Just poke a hole in it and pull it through. Sure, but the point is to do it without making a hole. But then it seems impossible. You're right. You cannot do it with an ordinary sphere, like a basketball. You have to understand the rules of the game. This sphere is made of an abstract elastic material. Oops. That can stretch and bend and pass through itself. But you cannot rip or puncture this material without destroying it. And you cannot crease it or bend it sharply. If the surface can pass through itself, what's the problem? Do you think allowing self-intersections makes it easy? Try it. I'll push the two halves right through each other. Be, Be careful. What about that ring around the equator? Remember, you mustn't tear or crease it. Ah, uh, let me try again. That's no good either. You're pinching it infinitely tight. But then there's no way. It's impossible. You'd have to crease or pinch it to turn it inside out. It is surprising, but watch this. Is this it? Is this a sphere turning inside out? You bet. That wasn't easy to follow, was it? <laughs> so a lot of you, I hope you're feeling like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? Who would have ever imagined that's the solution, right? Um, and the reason I showed you that video is that's basically what I think innovation is like. Right? There's all these tensions. It's like, yeah, let's consider everything, like any any idea, let's like innovate. But other on the other hand, you need to preserve the core. Then it's like, okay, we need to decide fast. If we, we don't wanna we can't have all the information, we'll never have enough information. So let's just, you know, go with our intuition. But on the other hand, if you're not careful, you can make things worse. Then on one hand, it's like, yeah, let's be brave, let's be courageous. But on the other hand, you don't wanna you don't wanna be reckless. So the question is like so then how do I know what's the right amount of balance, right? It's so tricky. And this is what's kind of difficult um, about a lot of conventional wisdom. A lot of conventional wisdom out there, if I say each of these things separately, many of you would go, yeah, okay, that makes sense, fair enough. But they all contradict each other, right? They, they all, you can't listen to all, of, it's hard to listen to all of them at the same time. So. Then the next question is like, well, how does one actually go about resolving a paradox like this? How do I know what is the right amount of balance, right? So I really thought about this for a long, long time. Um, and in terms of the antidote or the answer to this, it's actually something that I already shared with all of you guys. I actually shared it with you already, the antidote, right? The answer to this is I think, again, reconsidering what questions you're asking, right? Because when you think about innovation, you're really just trying to answer certain questions, right? But then if you, whenever you kind of get stuck into a situation like this, usually it's probably because, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's probably because you're the, asking the wrong question, but if you ask better questions, it will give you more and more clues into um, actually figuring out like where on the spectrum I should be, right? Um, and I cannot emphasize this enough. There's a reason I 
um, brought this up as the day one question. There's a reason I keep repeating it, just like how cliche uh, innovation and courage, just how these are cliche things. I really hope that me saying, are you asking the right question becomes a cliche of this conference, right? Because like of everything that I've ever learned in my entire life, like this is by far the most important part of piece of wisdom that I've ever encountered today. Like it is so powerful and it is just, I just cannot emphasize it enough. So wrapping up, basically innovation is hard, um, resolving paradoxes, there's no kind of clear answers. However, if you, whenever you're stuck, just keep asking yourself, like, am I asking the right question? Is there better questions here? And chances are you should be able to come up with something that's just one step closer to what you're trying to do. So um, yeah, so have a think about it, right? Now back to your entities, um, just have a think throughout today and the rest of the conference, like what's really hindering um, your entity or either yourself from innovating? Is it more because you don't know how much is too much? Is it more because about speed of decision-making or is it more about balancing courage and stupidity or recklessness, right? Um, yeah, have a think about that, guys. So day four is uh, a bit more about team management component of leadership. So I think a lot of practical lessons to be learned here. Um, and yeah, I don't have more to say. So lots of management stuff. Enjoy today, guys. Less is more. Yeah, cheers. You can have a quick uh, five minute break and then next session, right? Oh, actually next session is lots of breakouts. Yeah, go to the correct breakout room guys. So there's a lot of pack sessions today. Some feedback from yesterday was um, you want more breaks, but um, in order to help the FASI team, um, you know, just join the session on time. Um, even these plenaries, like if you join earlier, we can start the roll calls earlier and then we can you know, you know, reduce chance of finishing late. Cool. All right. Thanks guys. See you again later.